Hey guys, welcome. Um, I'm really glad that you're joining me this week. Um, this week my sermon title is called Something About You and I. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. Endow, endow me with power from on high, Lord God. Stretch me develop me through this and Lord touch every heart touch every spirit open our eyes open our minds and open our ears to what you have to say Holy Spirit about a relationship with you I praise you and I give you the glory speak to me speak through me hide me behind the cross this day let this message go around the globe and just pro and proclaim your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys. Um, first of all, let me let me tell you how this sermon uh, kind of came to my heart. Um, as most of you know, I'm a really big music fan. I love all kinds of music. I love um, pop, R&B, gospel, um, alternative, rock, um, I can even, I love country, new country and old country, I love old school, I love new school, I love, um, I love contemporary Christian, I love old school hymns, I love it all. So basically, what happens when I come up with a sermon? Most preachers um, will tell you that they spend hours in the Word of God. And although I love the Word of God, um, I love my Bible, I, I love um, Bible Gateway, and I'll get into what that is later. Um, what, but when I come up with a sermon, usually what happens is the song comes first and then the scripture, if there is a scripture, follows. Or sometimes what the Lord will do with me is just come up with the song and then um, ask me to just uh, flow with him. And I've come up with a new um, saying for myself. I, uh, I say to myself now, where where he flows, I go. So where this basically meaning where the spirit leads, I follow. Um, and it's just so awesome. So I I was singing You and I by Lady Gaga and um, I'm a semi Lady Gaga fan more th more since her movie with Bradley Cooper came out um, A Star is Born the fourth one um, I'm not really a Lady Gaga fan though um, but I love that song, You and I. It's just so amazing. And I was, I had the song in my head for about three days. I'm like, what's going on here? And I knew it was a sermon. When a song is in my head without cause for about three days, um, I know it's probably a sermon or something that the Lord wants to speak to you um, through me about. And then I was listening to the song and I said, Lord, what is it? What do you want me to say within this um, body of music that will speak to, to your people? And he said this, he said, tell them I want a relationship with them. I'm longing to them. I, I'm longing for them to love me and really worship me 
and I want them to remember what it was about that thing that 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 drew them to me or that that set them on fire for me because I believe that God does the drawing drawing it says that in the Bible but but we have to respond to his drawing and drawing and once we respond to his drawing it is like something is rekindled something is kindled and we just want to know all about him and we just want to tell everybody you know i just met jesus and we're just so on fire but as we get for most of us me included as we get um further into a relationship it kind of um get stale and mundane and routine and we go to church because uh, we just feel that it, it's not, it no longer become, it no longer is a pleasure anymore. It is something that we feel we have to do. And it, it, it we hear sermon after sermon. And when we first hear our first sermon, we're so excited. We're like, yes! And we and we do whatever the preacher says. Um, sorry, that was an alert. Um, we do whatever the preacher says. We're hungry for the word of God. We are in the word every day, every moment, and we we are just we just gotta have him. Um, but as time goes on, we kind of get busy it gets stale we get um out of we we um stop reading the bible and it sometimes happens gradually it doesn't happen all at once like you may you know you start off and you're like reading like a scripture a day and you can't stop reading it's like an addiction and then you know you get busy with kids and husband and wife and school and all that stuff and you skip one day and then you skip two days and before you know it it's been a month since you've read your bible aside from um reading it along with the pastor in church and he's He's saying today, I want you to reignite your passion. I want to become your first love again. I want you to remember what it was about me that you couldn't get enough of. I want you to become hungry again. I want you to um, become like insatiable for me again have this insatiable hunger I need he says I need you to ask me to create a new fire a new passion a new hunger uh, for my word and for my ways I need you to go back uh, to where you once were when you were when you were hot for me and now you're just uh, lukewarm uh, the Lord says somewhere I believe it is in Revelation about uh, being lukewarm or maybe it's in um, one of the books of Paul uh, but I think it's in Revelation where um, the Lord talks about I'd rather you be hot or cold instead of lukewarm we have too many way too many lukewarm believers like oh i go to i go to church if the weather's good or 
I read the Bible, if I have time, or it's not a must. And the Lord wants us to create a, the, sorry, the Lord wants to create in us a passion for him again, a hunger and a first book for him again. It's, it's like a marriage. Um, I'm not married, but I've heard from many married couples. If you don't work on the relationship, if you don't communicate constantly, try to get better or um, make time for each other, the relationship gets stale. And before you know it, when the kids are gone, you guys, uh, as a married couple, have nothing to talk about. And you, you guys have stopped discovering each other. Um, the key to any relationship, whether it be a friendship or whatever, whether it be your relationship with God, your relationship with your mom, your relationship with your spouse, is is the constant need to rediscover each other. Like, relationships get stale uh, when you think you know the other person, when you think you know God, when you think you know your mom, your sisters, your, you know, your spouse. Relationships get stale that way, your children. Um, like, and how, how you rediscover each other, how you constantly discover each other, it's constantly to remain curious, it's constantly to remain open to that person and open to um, the possibilities that open to the, the idea that there is something about that person that is constantly changing, constantly evolving. We know God never changes, but we do. And his expression through us over time should change. The way I told God I loved him when I was, let's say 15, or the way I expressed myself in worship when I was 15 should not be the way I express my self in worship now at 35. It should be a ch changing. It should be constantly evolving. It should be constantly flowing. And I think we've become stagnant, stagnant as believers. And I think that is the issue. And I think that we need to get out of stagnancy into just an explosive need to know him better. Like, um, uh, I think it was David that said, oh, that I might know him and the, and the power of his uh, resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, I could be confusing scriptures there, but I, I think it's, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Um, but knowing each other means intimacy. Like, into me you see. God wants to know you. So God already knows you so well. But he wants you to know him intimately. He, no he doesn't just want to know you which he does inside and out. He knows you better than you know yourself. He wants you to know him intimately. And the way to do that is time. You have to make time for God. And I'm not talking time just to read the scriptures. Although that is part of it, but that's only the beginning part of it. I believe that the scriptures are a mirror um, to a person's soul. I believe that in the Holy Scriptures, you will find some some Bible character that is going through what you're going through. And he wants you to understand. 
that in order to know him better, he needs time with you. He needs time to develop your hearing. Um, I hear a lot of people say, how do I get to know the voice of God? How do I get to know the voice of God? You get to know the voice of God through time and through relationship. Um, any married couple, I'm not married as I said, but I've talked to a lot of married couples and they'll say that it takes time to get to know your husband or your wife. It takes time to get to know their quirks. It takes time to get to know how to communicate with them and what their love language is and how, how they react to situations, how to comfort them, how to help them through. It all takes time and it takes the, uh, the patience and persistence to know how to do that. So in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. It takes time with God to get to know how he speaks to you, um, what he uses to speak to you. Because I said this before, um, God uses all kinds of different things to speak to different people. And, and the more time you spend with him, just learning how he speaks, reading his word, and plus getting to know his voice and how he speaks to you is the more you'll get familiar with how God speaks to you. And the basis of his voice starts in his word. It doesn't end there, I don't believe, because I believe he's still speaking. But I believe the basis for everything he's God to say to you is in the Holy Scriptures and you need to make time to familiarize yourself with the Holy Scriptures. You don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be a pastor. You just have to be hungry and thirsty for the knowledge of God. That's all. That's all he's looking for. He's looking for a hunger and a thirst. And I was thinking of something else too. Um, I was thinking of um, how Jesus' ministry and the whole uh, church and how God actually um, came out of the synagogue and got to, not God, Jesus came out of the synagogue and got to know what people needed and were and was acquainted with what they what they uh, who they were and their pain and what they needed so could it be then that the purpose of getting to know him is actually um, will actually open your eyes to get to know and see people better the way he sees people we often say um, Lord I want to see people I want to love people the way you love people well the way to do that is to rekindle your relationship and he will show you, he will give you an understanding of how to see people and go behind um, the face of people to their spirit and give you a greater understanding of how to help them. I was just talking about this the other day. I was saying that when I start um, uh, the minis my the ministry that God has placed in my heart. I really don't care about growing membership. 
I care about being with people where they are. Like, um, let's say if someone's going through a hard time, my first inkling will not to be, oh, invite them to church. Although, that is one way. But my, my thing is, just show them Jesus. And how you show them Jesus is to get to know Jesus. A lot of people think they know God and they think they love God, but they don't, they don't really know him. And they're afraid to say, Lord, I don't really know you. A lot of people say, Lord, I love you. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're whatever. Because that's a churchy thing to say. A lot of people are afraid to say, Lord, I want to know you, but I have no idea who you are. I know who the pastor says you are. I know who um, the minister says you are, but I don't know who you are. I want to know you. And we are afraid to be that vulnerable because we're afraid that he'll strike us dead. But he, he does, he's not going to strike you dead. He wants you to be honest about where you are. He doesn't want you to pretend like, like you have these feelings for him and you just have no idea about this whole thing. You know that you're saved because you said a prayer and you know that you're going to heaven. But after that, um, some people have no idea and for years they struggle with their relationship with God because they're like, I, I, they're like, I love you, Lord. I, you're great. You're wonderful. But how can you love someone that you don't know? Like, really, like, and we're afraid to say, Lord, I want to love you. I know I'm saved, but I want to, I want to love you more. But I have no idea how to do that. And we're afraid to say, to say, Lord, I don't know how to do, how to do that. And I think, um, when you understand that something, when you rekindle that something about, about Jesus and you, it'll give you a great understanding of people. I was saying this the other day too. I was say, saying that I think half the stuff we do, we didn't do in church have come from generations. I don't think um, half the stuff we've done in church is um, God breathed. I think that's because um, we do stuff because we don't know what else to do and we're too afraid to say, Lord, we don't know what else to do. We just, you know. And it was funny because I was looking at Jesus' ministry and, and how he did things and how, like, and I said, um, and when I was looking at the stories, I was like, you really stop to meet people at their need. For you, it wasn't something that they, uh, you did around Christmas time or anything. It was a constant uh, thing for you. It was a constant kind of charge for you to meet people where, where they are, to meet the broken, to meet the hurting, to, to, to sit with people, have dinner with people, have chat with people, preach to people. And I was thinking of um, the way we do church. And uh, to be quite honest, I was, I was wondering, Father, are we doing this right? Because when I look in the scriptures, I don't see you sitting in the synagogue for synagogue because he was Jewish. 
Jesus was Jewish, I don't see Jesus uh, sitting in the synagogue for two hours and and having uh, a cancer and and the rabbi, you know, introduce him as a special guest. I see him out there with people, meeting with people, meeting the needs of people, having having outside sessions and just talking to people, ministering to people, reaching people. And um, I just wonder if we need to change the format of church. But, but um, that's a whole other Rachel issue. Um, but as I'm, as I'm speaking, I can feel the Lord saying, get back to that something about you and I that first rekindled kindled your love for me. Get back to that something about you and I, meaning Jesus and you, that first kindled your love. And ex explore that and experience it more. And Ask him to give you a fresh, um, a fresh understanding of who you are and whose you are. And when you get that understanding, you'll begin to have a greater understand, have a greater um, um, grasp of your purpose and destiny. When you understand that what made you first fall in love with Jesus, you'll get a greater understanding. You'll get a greater grasp of your purpose and destiny. I think it all starts with understanding why you fell in love with God and not the churchy way. Not I loved him because he first loved me. Um, but go deeper. Why did you fall in love with God? Wh why did you uh, become a Christian? Why do you go to church? Why do you uh, fellowship on Sundays or Saturdays or whenever you worship? When you understand the why, it will open up your eyes to what you're supposed to do and what we we are here to do as as the body of Christ. Um, I think we've been our churches have been stuck in the same rut too long and he wants to um, he wants to open our eyes to new things constantly but we are so stuck in our liturgy, whatever our church liturgy is, and the liturgy just means what you do over and over again. Um, what what your service looks like, what your format is for your particular denomination or service. He wants to break the mold. And once you let him break your mold, Oh my God, he will do things that you won't even, you'll be like, what is this? And it's so funny. The world changes every, um, five, like about uh, five to seven years. But the ch church, I find, we stick with our same format whatever it is we stick with our liturgy without asking god is this working anymore do you want this do you want us to change things um god never changes but his me methods do and i think sometimes we get stuck in a rut of things that used to work but we don't realize um that they're not working anymore that they're not reaching anymore. And our, our technology may advance, but um, 
every pastor um, uh, should ask the Lord every year. This is what the Lord spoke to me. Every year, um, leadership should ask the Lord um, not only the vision for the year, but just in their services, if he wants to add something, if he wants to remove something, if he wants to totally change something. Um, like, I think if we just open ourselves up to um, the Lord doing something new, he will blow our minds. It's because we've been so tight uh, with whatever our church routine is that that um, we haven't been able to see uh, the blessings or whatever God wants to do in the earth. He's dying to give somebody new revelation. He's searching to and, to and fro to give somebody new revelation. But we're too locked in our church liturgy um, to understand that he wants to do something totally new. I believe, I'm going to say something controversial. He wants to do in this generation things that he's never done in history. I'm talking about even in biblical history. He wants to do things in this generation that the Bible people have never seen, that Paul has never seen, that David has never seen, that any of the disciples have never seen. But we have to open ourselves up. We just have to um, be, um, be ready to receive through his spirit what he wants to do. Make us available, God. Make us ready for this course, this year that, that you want to give us new vision. 2020 stands for new vision. You gave me a word for 2020. Um, and I will release that on New Year's Eve. Um, but Father, make us available for the new vision. Cause our eyes to see what you've got going on. Open up our minds to, to receive what you've got for us. There's a whole new slew of things, a whole new slew of ideas, a whole new slew of solutions um, to the world's problems that you would have us have us um, do. But we need to open our minds, Lord. Help us do that. Help us know how to completely trust you. Lord, we're human, so it's scary for us to not know what's coming. It's scary for us to completely trust. But help us, Lord, to completely trust you and where you're going. And help us to know that you will not let us drown if we, if we can just trust you and swim towards what you have us swim towards. Lord Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you for what you're about to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, join me live tomorrow. I don't know exactly what time yet because I haven't um, um, gotten uh, a routine yet. But join me live tomorrow for um, Storytime Sunday. It's episode three. Take care. Bye. Live on YouTube and Facebook. You made a way when the 
bad ones against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way Now I'm standing here Only because you made a way You move mountains And you cause walls to fall With your power Perform miracles There is nothing That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you made a way He's making a way today for someone I don't know who this word is for But it's been dark it's been very dark and very lonely and you were wondering why does everyone leave me why am i just so um lacking friends or lacking relationship and he's saying that he's making a way through the darkness he's making a way through the darkness and you will see clearly at the end of this road why he had you go through the time of loneliness. Hang tight. Don't quit. He sees your tears. He knows what's coming. And all of this will, will be for you to minister to other people. This is not for just yourself. What you're going through is to minister to others. What you're going through, as I said last week, is building muscle go through it go through it and you'll come out of, on dry land this will not drown you this will not take you under this will perfect you it's for the perfecting of your faith I know it's hard I know it's tough I know it's lonely but he's making a way out of the darkness this week you'll see the way. This week, you'll start to see the light at the end of this tunnel. And today is, I think it's November 23rd. So the week of November 23rd, 2019, you'll see victory. You'll see victory. You'll see victory today. I bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. And you're standing here only because he made a way. You'll be standing here only because he made a way.